Hello, everybody. Happy, happy, and happy new year to you all. I'm Dom Famularo, and I'm here for Mapex, which is so fantastic to have this opportunity to welcome on this Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have the wonderful opportunity of being able to bring in so many great, great musicians and just fantastic drummers from all around the world. We get a chance to come converse, have these conversations about their lives, and we all get to know them a little bit better. And we get to talk about the fantastic careers that they're having and how they got there and how they really kind of develop the skills that they have done to empower themselves. And today I am so happy. I've got Terry Baker with me, who is an absolute phenomenal player and musician and producer. We've got so much to talk about with him. So I'm going to bring him in right now. Let's bring in, please, Mr. Terry Baker. Hello, hello, hello. How you doing, Dom? Terry, I am fantastic, man. Thanks so much for giving us some of your time here to have to uh, to share with everyone. And we'll have people from all around the world that'll log in, that'll come in. And so if we have some questions from some people, I want them to ask questions and kind of get to know you. But thanks so much. And uh, I know you had just said you had spoken to Amber on the phone. She kind of helped us in a little bit of a, some technology stuff. Yeah, I was trying to uh, make sure that uh, I had the, uh, the right settings to make sure that I was... Uh, kind of uh, doing the right thing for this platform. So, yeah, she helped me out. She got me together. She's such a sweet person and a phenomenal drummer herself. I had a wonderful opportunity of speaking to her. So I got to go back. I got to go back to, to yourself, man. Your, your entire beginning of how you got involved with music as a kid, what, what brought you into the music world? Oh, man. Man, at my earliest remembrance of uh, music and uh, drums and uh, all of that good stuff uh, at church. Uh, I used to follow my grandfather around. He would take me everywhere. And um, I just remember this one time specifically because we were at the church was getting a new drum set. It's called the House of God. And this is in Lexington, Kentucky. This is my roots. So yeah. the church that Amber was talking about. So my grandfather was you know, always with the pastor, you know, so he did finances. So this particular time we was going to get a new drum set. And uh, I just remember uh, he brought the drum set to the house and my uncles, you know, was setting it up and, you know, I got to play on it. And I was like, man, this is so cool. Like my granddaddy is really cool. Like he's bringing all the gear to the house first before it goes to the church. And at that <laughs> moment, it was for me, it was Drum City. That's the first time that I remember drums. And, you know, in my head, that's what I wanted to do. He was actually the first one of the first drummers for our church organization. Well, when you think about how the fact that just by seeing the drum set and by hearing it and touching it and playing it, it's just so it's such a powerful instrument that we say, the drums finds us as opposed to us finding the drums is really kind of what happens. <laughs> uh huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, my mom used to say all the time uh, and everybody, you know, throughout the church organization, they used to say that, you know, I had drumsticks in my mom's womb because I <laughs> came out, you know, holding drumsticks and I came out playing. I don't remember any of that, but <laughs> all I remember is drums and how I wanted to play drums. It was it was. It was a part of me. It was in me. So, you know, I, it's it's really been uh, a tool that God has afforded me to use and to, uh, um, you know, just to help take care of my family, you know, uh, get me in some rooms uh, so that I could use my mouth to talk and to really tell, you know, about God and, you know, just 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 my life, you know, just just the things that help me get from point A to point B. So I'm grateful for that. How beautiful. How, how beautiful. So so you're young, you're, you're influenced you know, through the church. Uh, other than gospel music, was there any other kind of music you were listening to? I was. I listened to a lot of Phil Collins coming oh, up. Yeah. Phil Collins, Chester Thompson, of course. Uh, of course, I listened to Dave Werkel, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire. My grand, uh, well, my father was um, uh, a big Smokey and uh, the whole Motown sound. So oh, I listened nice. to a lot of those, you know, those drummers and the, that music. But that was it. Uh, pretty much it was gospel music. Um, yeah. 
my father didn't go to church that much, but you know, once we got around him, you know, in his van, he had this uh, souped up van, you know, the ones with the beds and all of that, the, the comfortable <laughs> seats and all. He had one of those. So when we take trips, you know, we'd be rolling down the road and all we would be hearing is Earth, Wind, Smokey, Michael Jackson, anything wow. Motown, uh, Kumo D. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, mentioned, you, know, you mentioned Smokey Robinson. I mean, of course, yeah. that was on many of those recordings. It was yeah. uh, Bernard Purdy, Bernard Purdy Purdy. Yeah. That was one of those recordings. Yeah. So you were you were being influenced, and of course, with Earth and Fire, the original was Freddie White on drums. Yep. Yeah. You know, Michael Johnson had Sugarfoot, you know, Jonathan Moffat on drums. So I mean, you Absolutely. were being influenced by some pretty serious players at that time. Like it was like I mean I just remember those Michael Jackson records and especially when that live one came out it was just like I could go back right now and just play every lick from that record and yeah. it, it it was just so powerful it, it was it was something about it I mean I think I think that was that was my intro to drummers uh, that uh, and even after that because after that you know, was Ricky Lawson and yeah. oh man, all of those guys. And they just, I just enjoy the musicality, you know, the things like everything was just so tasteful and it meant something. It, yeah. it wasn't just playing just licks for no reason. Everything yeah. meant something and yeah. it was so musical. So, you know, that, that was my up upbringing. And, and then I just love, Phil Collins and the big drums and, you know, I can feel it in the air, you know, all of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you talk about the drummers that you were being influenced by, Ricky Lawson, you know, rest his soul, an absolute phenomenal player. And Jeff Porcaro, another one, rest Absolutely. his soul. And Indugu Chancellor, rest his soul. We've lost so many <laughs> drummers. It's so many great musicians. And, and the one thing about it, you know, I, I found myself uh, coming up uh, just kind of taking bits and pieces mm -hmm. from different players. Uh, you know, one thing about it is that we all have to be who God called us to be, mm -hmm. even on our instruments and in life. And I think sometimes we mess up when we try to do do something else that really you don't know what it costs. I don't know what it costs those players to be who they were so it's like sometimes it's like you take those nuggets and you take those pieces and you you create who you are and i think that's what makes music so magical when you have players that just really stop and just understand who they are i was telling a guy uh one of my friends sean martin we was we was overseas at one point when we could travel but we were sitting down, we were talking to some kids and uh, he found it very interesting that uh, I was sharing with him that every part, the drums are made up of, you know, so many different components. So you have your sticks, of course you have your drum heads, the drums, different woods, cymbals, all of that stuff. So it all plays a part in being who you are, even to what stick you use. Like all yeah. of that plays a part, the heads, how you strike the drum, you know, your finesse, whether uh, um, whether it be, you know, just a finesse stroke or it's a power hitter. So all of those things uh, play a part in becoming who you are. And I think it, it, it's, it's one thing that we should all do is to figure out what makes you you. And I think that's what's important. That's that's what what I did. That's I looked at all of that stuff and I just said, man, it's incredible. But I know that's not me, you know, yeah. so I have to figure out what is me. What I have to figure out my lane. That's what I did. Well, this is so good. You talk about this. This is something which is really uh, extremely important. This is what I teach. Also, being an individual is such an important part of who we are as people. And yep. the kind of person you are is the kind of artist you're going to be. Absolutely. So we got to kind of find out who we are as people before we can kind of deliver our art form. But as long as we're having fun playing, then at least the journey in the discovering of ourselves is going to be a fun journey. Because. He was talking about being in the moment and that's 
that's like that's who I am. It's like sometimes even in church uh, uh, or being on tour, uh, some of the guys ask the question, like, how do you sit down and you play the same thing every night? Yeah. Well, there's a foundation to it. But in my head, it's like us having a conversation. We would never get on this, talk to each other and say the same thing yeah. twice. You know what I'm saying? So it's like there is there is a starting point. And then after that, you know, whether I figure out where instead of playing it on the one, I'm going to play it on the end. And that's yeah. the conversation with base. Oh, you're going to do that. So it's those little pieces that creates starts to create that conversation in music and spark something else that makes that night magical. Uh, and and that's that's what it is in in life, you know. I mean, you gotta you gotta create a moment that makes it feel good because every room is not the same, every venue is not the same. I mean, all the drums half the times are not the same. So, I mean, sometimes you gotta take what you're given and make it work and make that sound and make that groove and make that foundation what it needs to be. And that's what's fun about drums to me. Oh, ab absolutely. Well said. So at this point now, you we did you ever take any lessons? Were there any any formal lessons that kind of happened in, in your younger years? No, uh, I, I I tried to get into it in, in school and I went as far as I could. But uh, we went to church on Fridays and Saturdays. So mm -hmm. uh, after I got to high school, um, when you got to high school, if you wanted to further that, you had to be in marching band and all of that and i couldn't do it because i had to be at church so i never did uh take it uh from that point um so it's really uh a lot of god and what he's placed in me and what he made me to be well good for you good good for you so in this process now you're playing you're starting to understand the instrument you got some drums what was the first like, like, when did the gospel TV show come on, the Bobby Jones gospel show? When did that happen? That was, I want to say it was like the late 80s uh, because I graduated in 90. And uh, when I graduated, I knew exactly where I was going. So mm -hmm. I made I made uh, uh, a big line down to uh, Nashville to audition. Uh, and uh, the rest is history for me for you know, that time. So in 90, I, I had been noticing actually that they didn't have a consistent drummer. So I was, I was playing with in high school. I used to sneak down to, um, um, man, I'm telling stories. I used to sneak <laughs> down and skip school so I could stay at, uh, uh, Kentucky state. Now I was playing for a group called victorious then. And, uh, uh, we were writing music and, you know, they were one of the first groups in our area to go to the Bobby Jones gospel show. So we went down, uh, did that explosion. I got a, a chance to talk to the MD and uh, somehow the guy that got us there got me a number to the MD. And I told him, I said, uh, I noticed that y'all don't have a consistent drummer and I would love to come and audition. And uh, he was like, I don't really know who you are, but it's something about, you know, your uh, go get itness that is what I like in drummers. Because drummers, everything starts with drums. Uh, yeah. You know, the groove, I mean, I set, you set the foundation for what is getting ready to be played. So long story short, me and my uncle went down. He, he was a bass player. They didn't have a bass player either. So we both went down, audition, and we was out on the road the next weekend. <laughs> so when you say you skip school to go to these events, eventually <laughs> when you went back to school, when you went back to school, you made up all those classes. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did. I did. I promise I did. I <laughs> promise. I did. It was it was my last year, and you know it was what like that's how music was like that's what i wanted to do i knew exactly what i wanted to do uh they did a couple of articles on me at in lexington uh one when i was a um uh, i was a teenager 
and they had me beating on some coffee cans and it was so funny i had on a little tie and i was beating on coffee cans um and at that point i said you know this is what i want to do i want to travel i want to play with somebody like a andre crouch and uh and then years later, after I got on the road with Bobby Jones, they did a follow up and it was, you know, it, it's it, it's what I wanted to do. And it's I feel like everything that I've done up until this point was um, in God's design and his plan for all the things that I'm supposed to do. And now I'm sitting here talking to you about <laughs> some of the things that I went through. So that's actually my first endorsement was uh uh from a friend of mine in in nashville uh tennessee uh uh and through the show that's when the whole endorsement life and all of those things began to happen for me so you know it was a tool that really got me you know to the path and or on the path and to the place that i am now nice nice well what a wonderful story. you know we have several people that are that are logging on now and uh from from all around the country, all around the world. And I ask everybody, when you log on, let us know where you're from, you know, what, what country you're from, what uh, what state you're in, if you're in the, in the, in the states here, and uh, and let us know kind of where you are so we can have a, a, a resource of, of where everybody is. But there's a gentleman here that, that's asked the question. He's a phenomenal uh, drummer himself. His name is Carlos Gutzman, who is a phenomenal drummer and is a drum tech for many, many top drummers like Max Weinberg and Jerry, you know, Jerry Brown and all these great, great drummers. But he said... What was a defining moment in your career that made you realize that you had found your passion and it was going to be your calling? Was there any one specific moment of that when that happened? Um, if I will, I'm, I'm going back. Like I said, I mean, when when my grandfather brought that drum set home and I just remember going to a church and, um, you know, I was always little Terry. I when I started out playing, I had to stand up because I was short. So, you know, there I just remember moments like that. I remember uh, a moment uh, in one of the services where, you know, they was like, you know, man, I was just I was just playing. You know, I was just doing what I love to do. So it wasn't like um, it was something that really happened, you know, at a certain time. You know, yeah. from the first story, like I said, when my grandfather brought those drums home, I knew that's what I wanted to do. My mm -hmm. mind on that. When I was in the fifth grade, my 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 mom used to go to school all the time, uh, and I, I I love this teacher. Her name is Miss Hatchet. Uh, Miss Hatchet, and my my fifth grade teacher, she used to have uh, uh, parent teacher conferences. And she would tell my mom, like, I don't know what is going on with but all he does is just sit and and beats on his desk with these pencils. <laughs> like, can you get him to stop beating on his desk with these pencils? So it was like it was in me. Like, that's that's what I wanted to do. Now, if I will, if if there was ever a moment where where it it transitioned uh for me when i play with the artist and it it just still today uh it just kind of it's one of those stories that man stirs something up in me uh, uh a young lady by the by the name of vanessa bell armstrong she was married to a bass player uh in our church and vanessa bell armstrong she was a big artist this is at at the top of her heyday and gospel music when she made her mark on gospel music and i remember she used to come to the church and i remember this particular saturday um we were sitting there in service and she walked in i think it was it was either our pastor's anniversary or it was a like a mini convention or something so she walked in and everybody was in uproar because it's vanessa bell armstrong like she's like she was like the vocalist like at that point so Woo. when joe his name was joe forrest and when he came in he looked at um one of the keyboard players and he looked at me and he said come out so when i went downstairs i was like ah i was so hype i was so hype like because i'm I, I i think this is the opportunity for me to play for vanessa bell armstrong 
<laughs> so 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 at that moment he's he's showing us the groove he's playing the music and uh uh we go back into church you know have church all of that was great uh it was a really big moment now she comes back that's what it was she came back for our convention and she did a concert so of course i played that as well wow but in learning the music this was big for me as a musician because it it took me out of the church and it took me to a place another place in musicianship because growing up a lot of times you know uh it was just drums and organ we didn't we had a bass player you know they would come every now and then but it was really drums and organ driven we had mm-hmm. keyboards you know out the wazoo those was special days or whatnot but the core of it was drums and organ so of course for all you gospel drummers out there y'all know that when it's just bass and drums like you play everything like <laughs> like you you playing every guitar lick every bass lick with your kick like you playing the secondary keyboard player lines which is flash like you're playing everything so that's kind of the mode and the mindset that I was in at that time. So I'm just I'm just playing. So after that concert, uh, uh, Joe came up to me, took me to the back. He said, "Man, I just want to let you know, man, you 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 got you got goo gobs of talent, and you know the sky's the limit for you. But I I just want to give you a couple of nuggets." He said, "You know the people came to hear." Vanessa Bell Armstrong, they didn't come to hear you. <laughs> that like punched me in the gut. Woo, that, that, like, that, that, I'm, 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 I'm a teenager. I'm a teenager. So so one thing, one thing about it, uh, I've always been one to to set in the seat that like, you know, I take all of those moments as teachable moments, even though it hurts. I yeah. think it's those moments that help make you and 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 take you to another place that a lot of times in some people it might destroy them and it it, you know everybody ain't built for those moments and i I will say that everybody ain't built for those moments i used to tell my daughter all the time if you can take criticism from me because i'm gonna be hard on you because i understand when you go out there on the road you know they're going to give it to you from another place because they don't really care about you. So if you can take it from me, cause I care about you and I'm trying to, you know, give you what you need, then yeah, you, you can take it from those guys. Cause it, it's just going to roll off, off, off your shoulders. So in that moment, man, it like hit me like a ton of bricks. So then he said, then this was the kicker. Then he said, and I noticed every time you went around the drums and you you begin to play a role, you either sped my tempo up or you slowed it down. <laughs> I was like, oh man, like, oh, he is chewing me out. And then he came back and he said, but you know what? I just wanted to say that because I see much potential in you and I see where you're going. So I have to, I have to do this right now. So then when you get to another place, you'll understand how to, to, to handle yourself. So after that, that point, I went, got me a drum machine. I went and, and, and I went and I practiced. Now there was a couple of drummers in gospel music that at that time, we only had a couple that we saw, you know, or heard on records. That was a Joe Smith rested. So that was one of, yeah. our greatest jewels in gospel music because he played drums and he played bass and he was just so musical but joe smith and at the time uh uh michael williams that played for commission commission was big back then and uh um uh milton Mil- bronson uh oh shoot i can't think of his uh kevin bronson was the drummer now kevin was vanessa's drummer Kevin was a solid smack hard hitter and I mean straight pocket you know he, he just laid in there and that groove just set right there so uh at 
he said, well, maybe listen to, you know, some of Kevin's records and, you know, just kind of, you know, that pocket that he has, it just sets right there. It just makes you want to groove and it don't move. So besides getting my drum machine, I listened to him. I was already listening to him, but I started paying attention. And then Michael Smith, I mean, Michael, uh, Michael uh, Williams. So one thing Michael Williams did, I noticed when he played those records, he will always keep a quarter note kick with uh, uh, with the groove on mostly all of his fields. So he kept that. So I said, and I asked him one day, I said, why did you do that? He said, well, that was my meter. So that when I came around those drums, like I always had my meter going. That was my that was my uh, drum machine. You know, yeah. so I started to practice that way, play my fields that way. And, and it worked like it really it really helped. It really, you know, got me to a place to where I felt like when I sat down with the drum machine, whether you cut it off or you cut it on, I'm going to be somewhere in that in that vicinity so that, you know, you ain't going to be saying that uh, I'm slowing you down or speeding you up. You ain't going to never get me like that no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not it sounds like you've had several defining moments. Listen, and, listen. And I think life, I think life and the experience of, you know, every every experience that you have, it teaches you something. So, listen, that's if 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 that's one, then yeah, there it is. There it Maybe, is. Well, Carlos says, Carlos's second part of the question was, has your drum set changed since you've been progressing in your career has that adapted yeah i i think it's it's good thank you, uh, Three questions. thank you one one of the things that i don't you can't even see my my setup right now but um i was paying attention to and here, here's what i would say to that um uh because i'm i'm up in age uh i'm i'm close to 50 and and right now, oh my gosh! I'm close to fifty. I wish I was close to fifty. I passed fifty many years ago. <laughs> See, I'm I'm close to fifty, but God is preserving me. Come on, somebody! <laughs> Man, I'm so grateful. But I was saying, yeah. So, so I was getting ready to say the one thing that I've never uh, been intimidated by or anything like that. Mm -hmm. is the next generation i remember sneaking down i would hear something that my daughter was playing downstairs and i would sneak down there and i would just crack the door open and i would just look like what are you playing in there i think all of these moments uh there i have a cousin named alan mapson i have a little brother named steve williams I have uh, a couple of other guys uh, that, you know, of my peers, Jeremy Haynes, Calvin Rogers, uh, Kuhn, um, just, and I want to start naming names because a lot of these guys I listened to and I felt like, man, these guys are doing different things. Like it's a different approach to our instrument. So uh, one, one of the things, that I got from Stephen Williams, uh, and it was funny, cause uh, I went down in his basement one time, and he would set the drums up differently. So instead of eight, ten, twelve on down, uh, I think this particular time he was doing uh, eight, twelve, ten, sixteen, and I I was like, okay, well, what? Why'd you do that? And he was just saying it was just a different approach, something different to do. But after I started playing it, you know, I realized sometimes it makes us think about how we go go around the drums and even what is your first time for your first hit. You know, a lot of times where, yeah. it, where the 10 would sit, now the 12 sits. And now in gospel music, you know, it's a lot of CCM stuff. So. I think I'm true to the eight and the 10 because I just love those drums. I, Mike Mitchell always gets on me and says, hey, man, don't you ever walk away from that eight and that 10 because that <laughs> is that is the whole Xana roll right there. Eight, 10, 12, all the way around. 
So you can't you can't ever leave that uh uh from that rebirth record. That's that's you, Doc. So, but I will say, yeah, I do try to uh listen to other guys and see what they're doing and try to figure out why they're doing it. Uh, I think that's what keeps us relevant. I think we all have something to um, to give to the world um, musically. I think we just got to figure out what that is. And that's that's one of the things that I feel like, you know, I come in here even to to drums and snares and all, all, all of that. I think it makes us play and approach our instrument differently. So I would say, yeah, just go in, set up the drums differently, do something different let let it be a different approach because creatively it will spark something that you might say, man, I didn't know I had that in me. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, I keep, I keep switching up the way that I set up my drums. I keep that going. Well, that's, that's fantastic. And it, it's what, it, it's what keeps us fresh and creative. Yeah. yeah. But now you started playing, you went on to play with, you got, uh, but I hear Donnie McClurkin, Yolanda Adams, Shirley Caesar, Dick Powell, Kurt Carr, a lot of players that you, you know, different types of players, Joe Pace, and of course, um, Kirk Franklin. So you, you really kind of, your career as it's growing, this is an, an incredible place. There's an interesting question here from uh, Stephen Williams. Check this out. <laughs> what was the defining moment when you felt you reached a new plateau in your career? Thank you, Stephen. Uh, I, I would say probably the Kirk Franklin experience. Mm. Um, and I'll say it from a couple of different perspectives. Um, there was a, there was a time before I got to Kirk that, that I tore my Achilles. Um, so I couldn't play drums. Um, and it was at the end of, um, my Bobby Jones, um, career or, you know, my time with, with the show. Yeah. Um, I tore my Achilles and I couldn't play, uh, for eight months and I sat and, uh, I think it was a real defining moment because it really, I felt like God was sitting me down to uh, talk to me for the next place that he was about to uh take me um i think a lot of a lot of times we feel like that in our careers that what where we land sometimes in the beginning or in the middle is the end it's like that thing is going to take us all the way to to when we're not playing anymore and at times i felt that way at, at times I felt like that this was all I was supposed to do. Uh, I felt like that I was at the cream of the crop and God was trying to, to show me that I have some other places and some other things that I want you to do. And I want people to hear you. Now, the story behind that was I couldn't play. I came back and that was a door that opened up for two of my little brothers to walk in a, a, the next generation to walk in to a scenario that I help, you know, help them uh, springboard them into. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> at that point, um, let's get to Kirk Franklin. So yeah. uh, we get there and uh, initially the produ producer that I was working with uh, that was kind of working on that record, called me and said, hey, man, uh, we have this opportunity to do this record. So he sent me the music. Um, no, let me take that back. He didn't send me the music. He just gave me the initial call. Mm -hmm. Called me back and said, not going to do it. Like, it ain't going to happen. So at that point, I was like, man, something in my spirit said, no, you are going to do it. <laughs> So I just left it alone. I, I left it right there. So a um, couple of months went down the road. I get another call back from the same producer saying, hey, I'm about to send you like four songs. Listen to them, learn them and be ready. I'm going to fly you out in two days. 
So I get out to the first rehearsal. Little did I know that they had already been rehearsing. They had been rehearsing for months. So I get in there and uh, the songs that I'm supposed to play, um, uh, when it came time for it, you know, it's it's one of those moves where um, uh, we sit down, we play the music, um, and actually they were they were rehearsing one song, and Kurt asked me to to play that song uh, as they were creating. So I played the song, and it wound up being "Brighter Day," uh, uh, but that wasn't on my list. So I played the song, and. It had the hump to it. So after that rehearsal, Kurt came to me and said, hey, man, come take a ride with me. Now, mind you, me and Kirk Franklin knew each other because of Bobby Jones. Mm -hmm. So mostly mostly everybody that I've encountered, I met them through the show. So that's why I'm thinking in my head, like, like this is this is where I'm supposed to be. Like, there's nothing else after this. So. OK, so we take the ride. So he says, man, I, I have to apologize to you. He said, I, I put you in the box of Bobby Jones. He said, I didn't know that you were as musical as you were. I heard this producer talking about you. But I was saying to him, you talking about the Terry Baker, the place for Bobby Jones. <laughs> but that was that's what that music needed. So, you know, sometimes you get you get put in a box, but. You know, at, at, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at that moment, we have a next conversation. He said, he said, man, I, I have to apologize because I didn't know. So we get back. We play a Hosanna. We plan all look after that. Then here it is. I'm on the road with him. He, mm -hmm. It's like after that, it was it was the rest is history. And that's how I got, you know, to be with Kirk Franklin. And that's 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 probably another another pivotal moment but in the same token i felt like that god was showing me another a part of my assignment because of, like i said you know a lot of times you know in music and 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 you know some of the gigs that we feel like that we have that we can't let go sometimes you got to you got to understand who you are and realize the power that is inside of you not for you to just stop and say that I can only do this and I can only do that. But there's different heights and there's different levels and different places that that at times God wants to take us. But we put ourselves in this box and we shut ourselves off from the world and from the greater thought that he is trying to show us. Look, I got so much for you over here that you not even paying attention to. So that being said, that opened up a door for two other great musicians and Alan Mapson and Stephen Williams to, to have that platform of Bobby Jones, you know, and to help launch who they are. Mm -hmm. Then on the flip side, you know, when, when the first gig that I, that I played after I came back from tearing my Achilles, I was in Chicago, Illinois, and uh, uh, Calvin Rogers, and that dude is a monster. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and at the time, you know, uh, he was a young fella as well, but uh, he came to that concert and where he actually called me and said, hey, man, can I come hang out and come to the sound check? And I said, sure, man. So he came after sound check. We just sit, that, sit you know, at the table and we just talk, and I just uh, – gave him everything you know that got me to this point and it's like after that then you see it's another so it's kind of like we can't be afraid to give back to the next generation because sometimes that is the pieces that god uses he uses us to 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 water you know and nurture something in somebody else so that they can do the same thing to somebody else. So it's all a process and it's all one of those things. I'm still good friends with all of these guys. And it's, it's, it's amazing because I think, you know, um, uh, I, it, this is what the world needs. I like, I'm, I'm not afraid to come and sit and chat and give what I have to somebody else because I don't want to be a hoarder of, of that. 
you know, of that thought process. Cause it's a, it's a mindset and, you know, sometimes you see it and you just got to rebuke that thing. So I know I'm talking, I'm talking church stuff now, but let I'm me, just, let me bring this up. That's a good question. I mean, we are, we're in a, in a, in a very uh, a challenging time now in, in the world because of this pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. A challenge, you know, music, live music has been put on on hold. Uh, so musicians are having a challenging time, and also uh, here in America, uh, you know, there's so much political craziness going on right now. It seems like you really have a strong faith-based, you know, philosophy. What is it about your faith that drives you to kind of get past all of this stuff? I think it's it's really having a relationship with the creator, uh, with with God, who I say that um, my mom taught me at an early age and all that ways acknowledge him and he would direct your path. So it's kind of been it. That's been one of the scriptures that really, you know, um, that has really driven me. And it's one of those things that gives me peace, even in my mom's passing. I didn't understand it, but. I, I realized that in this day, a lot of times, you know, the only peace that we have sometimes is, it, is in our faith and in God. Um, he is a sustainer. Uh, and, you know, sometimes we don't understand what it is, but to to realize that I can go and have find comfort, mm. you know, in those thoughts, even while I'm hurting. Um, that's the only thing, even even through this pandemic, you know. I've I've been I've been in a place to just sit and just talk to God and and God, you know, this is in your hand because evidently you're trying to get everybody's attention. <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out what are you trying to say to to the world? Because this 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 pandemic and this situation didn't just touch certain types of people. It, it didn't touch over. It's like touching the world. It's everybody. We're all in the same boat. Everybody is having church the same way. Everybody is doing things the same. Like this is something that only God would present. And it's like he's trying to get attention. So my peace is in him that that I realized in throughout my career when I told my Achilles, I, I didn't even understand that. Like for me to sit down, I cannot play for eight months. And then when I came back, like I had to go at that point, I had to go somewhere. I was working at a, a lawyer's office, like at me, all of these things. And I, I found myself, I was at Amazon one day. Uh, I was working at Amazon. I was at Amazon. I was in, in the warehouse mm -hmm. and I was talking to a coworker of mine and I was just talking about just different things that, um, uh, I had did and where, where I was going and they looked at me and they said, okay, well, why are you here? <laughs> I, I, you know, you seem to be one of, of faith. So why are you here? That day I walked right out of there. And that after that point, that's when the Kirk Franklin call came. So it's interesting how the, how, you know, in the course of our lives, decisions that we make, we have to have a certain trust in our instinct. Absolutely. It, it, we always have to trust who we, who it is we're saying that we serve. And I, I believe that, you know, everything that I've done has been because the grace of God and the plan that he had for me, even at this point on this platform, I don't take anything for granted. I take it, you know, as thank you, God, for allowing me and trusting me to be on a platform such as this, to be able to pour into the next generation and just people all over the world. So if it if it, if drums gets me there, my mouth is certainly going to sustain me there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Well, beautifully said. So in this process here now, you you joined Mapex in about 2016. Was there any specific model that you liked working with as far as drums? And, and, and what do you have back there behind you? So, so coming here, I made the move after living in Lexington for <coughs> all my life. 
in Nashville. Then I make this move and have this call to come to Dallas, Texas. On my way to Dallas, Texas, Marco was still a part of the family. Marco was one of the first people that gave me an endorsement. He brought me to Vic Firth. He brought me to Evans. Uh, Marco Sikori. Marco yeah. Sikori. Wonderful guy. That's yeah. my dude. Yeah. So, um, so, so in coming out here, he said, I said, well, listen, Marco, I have my truck. I'm getting a, a U-Haul. I'm going to put this hitch on here. And uh, all I'm taking is a bed and some of, these, some of these drums. So let's go. So he said, <laughs> he said, come by the warehouse. We'll have them ready for you. So I took out there actually a Saturn, a red, the red uh, Saturn. I took that out. I brought that out with me and uh, I have it in um, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 kick and a 20 inch kick. Nice. So um, that's pretty much my my preference. 20 is is my preference as kick drums. Uh, but, you know, understanding that, you know, anything may cause me to use, you know, different kinds of drums. I love birch drums. Yeah. My first intro to Mapex, though, was in 90. I bought a, a Black Panther snare. Yeah. And uh, uh, that was that was a monster snare. That, that's on a lot of records. Uh, everybody that knows the Quiet Time series and uh, there was an instrumental series that we did. That is the snare for all of a lot of those records. Yeah. So um, it was a monster snare and it was a couple of other ones, but I just fell in love with the Black Panthers. So when he told me, he's like, man, these drums are phenomenal. So straight out the box, I took them out and uh, I began to wail on them. And like, you know, I've, I've been in love with them ever since. Uh, I've added several different ones. I have an anniversary kit as well, but I have it in a 22. Uh, it's, more bigger drums yeah. uh, of the wood um on it but uh, i'm still using the saturn i have a black one here um uh, with it i don't i don't know what this is that black that burst so i use yeah. it yeah. this is one of the snares i use with it so um i'm looking forward mark i'm waiting on that uh that new the evolution Mark Bennett, who's hooking us up with the uh, oh, yeah. series, the, the Evo series, which are which are Birch, you know, Birch, you know, Saturn series, which yeah. I had the privilege of playing uh, earlier this year uh, for Drumio, which is a, a, a large educational uh, facility, online school up mm -hmm. in Canada, and we had a festival that was there, and that was actually the the end of <clears throat> the end of February, just before this pandemic hit. So the timing of the festival was great, but I had the Evolution kit there. It sounded fantastic yeah it's 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 it it's going crazy so i'm i'm waiting for that kit so uh and we'll add that on in here and do some videos with that but yeah i i just love the make mapex brand uh it's good solid drums there they're warm i like explosive warm um drums but then too i like drums that i don't have to do much to uh tuning and you know with using uh, a lot of the evans heads is 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 uh who i use i love the marriage uh between evans and mapex as well um uh, so i mean it works for me um uh, with these drums well it's it was fantastic what i've seen about just even the tuning of these drums they, they hold their tune so well uh, it just it just responds so well i mean it really is a yeah shell and design and of course all the drums that they make the armory this the saturn series yeah. and of course all the, of them. yeah the design lab which is a whole nother level of, of of design that came out of the mind of russ miller which was just fantastic really really great great stuff yeah yeah absolutely so i mean i'm 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 loving everything that i get out of every drum that i set up one of the things that i i don't i don't do a whole lot uh is you know I think with drums, sometimes every drum has a sweet spot, especially snares. Hmm. Uh, even though, you know, people say that they are versatile, 
uh, a lot of snares are versatile in their tuning or whatever you can do with them. Uh, I, I think they all have a sweet spot and it, it's cool to um, find that sweet spot between the head and then the actual wood and drum and how you tune, you know, so it, it it's working for me uh, uh, as far as what I have with Mapex. It's, it's definitely a marriage. Well, oh, that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. You know, you've been, you've traveled, you've played with so many different situations. You've got such great experience in, in what you've done and you've gotten involved in playing and, and you've been doing some producing too, right? Yeah. I, I, I've been, I've been doing that. I mean, all my life. I mean, when I'm not, well, not all my life, but you know, since I, my latter, latter part of the years, actually when I tore my Achilles, I started, you know, I couldn't play the drums. So I wound up being, uh, uh, a choir director hmm. and I started teaching parts and doing all of that. And, you know, one of those moments, I don't know if Amber remembers this, but I'd never forget. We was riding home one Saturday and um, she looked at me and she said, daddy, your alto section was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Man, the, the the children will say whatever's on their minds. Like, and you know, that particular song, you know, it was some, it was some shaky notes, but you know, I, I that's when I knew, okay, it's something different about her because she she's hearing stuff on on a whole nother level. She's well, she, she really is. I had when I had the chance to yeah. talk to Amber, you know, and again, talk about the apple not falling too far from the tree in this one here. I mean, she is as as faithful as you are. She is as articulate as you are. She is as humble as you are. But she's a brilliant young girl that really plays great and is just so. She was. She's just so deep in how she feels music, and and her perspective to life. You've done a great job there. Bless you. She's 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 a very humble and uh, bright young lady, and I'm just so proud of her. Uh, watching her um, evolve and become the woman and the musician and the artist and all of that stuff. You know, I'm her biggest fan, uh, me and her mom. But it's 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 one of those things that I am a proud father. I'm proud of all my children and all the things that they are going after in life and that they decide to do. I think um, she was telling that story, you know, for me. Um, as I said in the beginning, like no one made me play drums. It was just something. And I can't, I cannot, I cannot get off this interview without, you know, giving, saying a word about two guys that really um, helped me in two areas. Uh, there was a, I have a cousin, his name is Benny Mapson. And, um, you know, after a point, all of my uncles played all my cousins, like, with the Mapson family, I have to listen. First off, <laughs> Mapson family. Okay, so, so, so I'm one of many. I'm one of many mm -hmm. great artists and great talents and great singers and musicians. I'm, I'm, I'm one of many. And I will say this: uh, you know, growing up, all of them, my uncles. Uh, all of them pl played something. So bass, guitar, I had four uncles, bass, guitar, drums, and keys. My Uncle Frank, Steve, Mike, and Uncle Bugs. So that was my uncles on that end. Then there was a group that was uh, Mapson and Rollins. So they were called the Rollins Ensemble, which was named after our pastor. Wow. So uh, in that, you know, my mom and everybody's in there, but I had a cousin, his name was Benny Mapson. So Benny played, that was my grandfather's brother's son. So <laughs> Benny was the one that would take me and made sure that, you know, he would sit me on his lap at times and let me play, you know, as a youngster. And then when we got into service, uh, there's this one time and, uh, uh, Stephen Williams is Stephen Williams' father. So we were at one of our meetings. We was in Ohio uh, uh, at Bishop Robert Campbell's church. I'll never forget it. 
and he was sitting there and the church was going up. So and what Amber was talking about, like all these praise breaks and all like that was that was a constant like that could go on for hours and hours. I've seen drummer after drummer after drummer just fall by the wayside. <laughs> and who's up next? <laughs> and, you know, I mean, musicians just like falling off instruments. I mean, because that, that's what it would be. So at this particular time, so um, uh, he was on the drums and he looked at me and he said, come on, come on, you play. So I went over there. So uh, Tony Williams, Deacon Williams looked at me and said, who is this kid on these drums? Get him off here. I need a drummer on here. <laughs> so he was going, he was going that route. So then uh, Benny said, no, 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 he's all right. He's all right. He's all right. So soon as they struck up, I, I lit into them drums. And after that, he said, he said to me, and this is one of the stories that's going to be in my book. He said, he said to me, he said, man, I really, I, I'm really humbled by your gift because I didn't think you could handle it. Hmm. And you took that moment and you, you, you went straight in and you did what you were supposed to do. He said, when I, when I, when I, when I get, uh, you know, when I get on the road and I get the right gig, I'm bringing you along with me. <laughs> He's one of the guys that when we got to Bobby Jones, I called him and brought him to the Bobby Jones show. So it was like one of like, we talk about this all the time and we, we are the best of friends and we, we still talk about this to this, to, to today. And it's, it's so hilarious and how some things work out, but, I will say, like I said, the the Mapson family was just goo gobs of musicians, mm -hmm. um, and I was under the era with uh, Mark Mapson, which was one of my cousins that played organ. Well, who was playing with him at the time was another cousin named Bill Rollins. Now, Bill is the reason why I tune drums, and I take care of my instrument to all you drummers out there <laughs> in churches beating these drums up and drums falling apart. Stop it. <laughs> so Bill was the guy that at every moment, like he would break his drums down, clean every part. Like he was that guy. So he like his drum, every drum set that he had was immaculate. Like even still to this day, like <laughs> he's got, he's got, he actually has uh, the Black Panther. Immaculate. He took care of them. They sound great. Like when you got to church, whenever he brought his drum. Now, this is what's funny. So we had this little corner where in the corner you had the drums that was in the back, the organ, then the bass, guitar. So, so he would bring his drums and set them up in the front. For, <laughs> like... <laughs> And it would be two drum sets going oh, on, but fantastic. it would be so fantastic. Like I like those moments. Like I mean, my 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 stories about church, uh, man, it's some great moments. And he was another one. But those two guys really, uh, really helped, and they pushed me as a young musician. Uh, and um, you know, after a while, you know, I got with Mark, which was playing with the group Victorious, and that's who you know, took me, um, besides him, you know, it was me, him. And then later on, my brother began to play the bass. So it was us three that was always playing together. And, you know, those moments are, you know, at times. <laughs> well, that, that, well, you've got some great, great stories. I'll tell you something. Yeah. When you start putting this book together, I want to get a copy of this book, baby, because I got a feeling there's going to be some real inspiring it's stories cool. in there. And there'll be some great, great stuff to share that I think people will be reading for a long, long time. So I think you've got an incredible history that you have, Terry, and you really have inspired many people. And you're producing, like I said, with Amber, a whole nother generation of great, great drummers that are going to take this art form well into the 21st century. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's funny because, you know, I, I, I was I was uh, sharing with her the other day. It's like you got bass guitars. And all of this stuff coming to the house now. And, you know, I, I used to tell, uh, now we'll say this for every musician out here that's on here. You know, just understand one one thing. 
that your time and your season is around the corner. You just have to wait and see God and ask him, you know, you know, when that time is. I don't I don't think don't 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 get weary. Don't get weary. Don't get weary because it will come. It will come. I used to tell her all the time, you know, she's looking at uh, what I have and uh, and all the years that I put into doing what I do, like this cost me something. Yeah. Like every drum set that I have in this room and and all the stuff that I have in here, it cost me something. You know, if it sometimes it was the time with my family. Yeah. And you know, and some of that stuff I can't get back. But sometimes you just have to understand that there is a great there is a plan for your life. And you just got to wait on God for it because, you know, man, let me tell you, um, and, 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 and looking at some of this stuff and, and looking at the history of it sometimes and talking about it, you know, it, it takes me to another place, um, where I'm just humbled and I'm just, uh, grateful that, uh, God saw it in me to, uh, be who I am. Well, point well taken. Well, gratitude and humility are definitely aspects of what you stand for, Terry. And it really is great to see that you are passing that on to into your family and to people that listen to you. You have continued to give us great music. And for that, I'm so thankful to you. On behalf of Mapex, Terry, we thank you so much, man. Keep it going. Stay strong. We'll be in touch in the future for sure. If I can help you out in any way, man, I'm a phone call away. And uh Keep us all posted on what you're doing. You've got some great people that have listened to you, some really dedicated fans that look up to you, and you are a great role model. So on behalf of Mapex, I thank you so much. Stay well, stay safe, and God bless. Thank you, Dom, and I appreciate this. Until the next time. Thank you so much, Thank you so much. Bye-bye. All right.